Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and another video. Today I'm experimenting with two Perylene watercolours from Winsor & Newton's professional range. Perylene Violet, which is new to me, and Perylene Green, which I've had in my palette for a little while. So I'll be swatching them out and looking at their properties, and then I'll be testing how they combine with some of my other watercolours in a painting demonstration of a kiwi and some grapes. So I hope you enjoy the video and find it interesting or useful. All the materials I'm using will be listed in the description box along with a reference photo from Pixabay if you fancy trying this one out for yourself. So I'm going to start by swatching out these two watercolours in my watercolour sketchbook and for this I'm going to be using the paint straight out of the tube as I find it helps to get a better idea of their full range of values. I've also drawn two black lines on my sketchbook here using a permanent marker which will help to show the paint's transparency or opacity. Both of these Winsor & Newton pigments indicate that they are transparent by the open square on the outside of each tube, but I like to try them out for myself, so I start off with adding only enough water to get the paint to move across the paper, and then gradually add more water so I can see the full range of values from darkest to lightest. I'm starting with Perylene Violet, which contains pigment PV29, and despite appearing almost black on the palette, it reveals a beautiful transparent purple maroon colour with the addition of water. Perylene Green next, and this contains pigment PBK31, which is actually a black pigment, but with the addition of water reveals a beautiful transparent dark green hue. Both watercolours are indeed transparent and non-granulating and when mixed together create a really lovely black that you can lean more red or more green depending on the proportions and I'll be using this for the seeds on my kiwi fruit. Now the swatches are completely dry, you might be able to see that there is quite a noticeable colour shift with both pigments, but their transparency means that you could easily layer them or maybe even use them as a glaze over other colours, so I'll be testing this out in my demo painting. Next though, I want to test the staining or permanence of these watercolours and see how well they lift just by re-wetting the paper with a damp brush. Both of these pigments are classed as staining and permanent on Winsor & Newton's website, but testing this out for myself reveals that although I might be able to lift out some of the pigment, I won't be able to get back to the white of the paper. Further layering showed that I can also cover up some of the white speckles that you can sometimes see with dried perylene colours, and further lifting, even on a very diluted mix, confirmed that if I want to achieve bright white highlights on my grape study, that I'll either need to mask them out, paint around them, or maybe even add them in at the end with an opaque white medium. So it's useful to do these swatches as it helps you to decide which techniques to use in your painting before you start. Now with my simple outline sketch drawn and having spritzed my dried watercolours with water to activate them, I take some Windsor Red and some of Daniel Smith's Pyrrole Scarlet and mix them each with some of the Perylene Violet to create new colours to use on the grapes. I really liked how the Perylene Violet muted the brightness of these two reds to give a more realistic and natural colour. And so, painting one grape at a time, I used these three colours in combination for my first layer. I was careful to avoid painting on any areas that I wanted to keep white, but still used the lifting method for areas of the grapes that were lighter to give a softer highlight. I also mixed brown ochre with the perylene violet and dropped it onto the top of the grape here whilst the paper was still damp. And then I experimented with mixing yellow green and sap green in with it too. Before going back in with more concentrated perylene violet for the darkest purple parts of the grape. For each of the grapes I painted wet on wet where I wanted the colours to mix together seamlessly and wet on dry where I wanted a bit more control, 
like painting around any bright highlights where I wanted to preserve the white of the paper as I knew I wouldn't be able to lift these out later. My plan didn't completely work out on this next grape though. Looking at my reference photo I could see a bright highlight on the top left hand side. So when I painted in my first wash of Windsor Red and Pyrrole Scarlet mixed together, I left the highlight area free of paint and water. However, when I went in with the Perylene Violet, I tried to transition from the highlight to the dark purple and ended up covering it up, so I'll have to fix that later on at the end. I would probably have done well to mask these highlight areas off, but sometimes masking fluid can leave unnaturally crisp lines which you then have to soften out anyway, so I'm not too worried about it for this sketchbook study. I needed to let the grapes dry completely before painting a second layer, so in the meantime I painted the first lightest layer of the kiwi fruit. For this I mixed yellow green and sap green together and painted it all over the middle fleshy part of the fruit. I also used some of the black I'd mixed at the start using the perylene violet and the perylene green together to paint in some of the darker shadow areas between the grapes. For the skin of the kiwi I mixed sap green with burnt sienna to create a sort of olive brown colour. And then I mixed in some perylene violet to drop onto the damp paper where the colour of the grapes would reflect. With another layer of sap green applied to the kiwi, I then used a small damp round brush to lift out some of the watercolour and reveal some of the lighter sections. And when this was dry, I went back and added further definition to these sections using more concentrated sap green and painting onto dry paper. I didn't copy the reference photo exactly here, but used it to see how the sections radiated out from the central core of the fruit, to help it look more realistic. To get an even darker green, I also mixed in some of my perylene green with the sap green, which really helped to make the colours pop. I have heard some artists comment that perylene green can appear powdery or flat looking, but in my opinion this is certainly not the case when it's used in combination with other watercolours and I found it quite a useful colour to have on my palette. But I'd love to hear your thoughts on this so please let me know by dropping a comment in the box below. Ok so now I'm going to paint the second layer of watercolour onto the grapes. As now it's dry you can see the perylene violet has lost some of its saturation. I'm going to try and fix that by simply painting over the grapes with a glaze or two using more of the Windsor Red and Pyrrole Scarlet. This will also cover up any white flecks in the pigment and help to unify and pull the painting all together. I can also correct my values at this stage and add in more perylene violet where needed to add contrast and help make the fruit look more realistic and 3D. I also add the suggestion of some shadow underneath the grapes before mixing together some more perylene violet with sap green. With this colour I can layer over some texture to the kiwi skin using a dry brush and a stippling motion. From here and for those all important black seeds, I use a more concentrated perylene violet and perylene green mix and paint them onto dry paper using the very tip of my brush again. 
Now I could have stopped here and called the painting done, but I was still curious to try mixing perylene violet with white gouache to paint in a smooth matte background. So I created a border around the fruit using washi tape and began with a pale background that was more pink than purple. I wasn't too keen on how this turned out, so I added more pigment to my white wash and another layer and ended up with this darker two-tone panel background. I'm still not quite sure about it, but it was fun to try out and being darker really shows up the highlights on the outside edges of the grapes. And speaking of highlights, I then decided rather than using gouache to redefine these using a few of my Prismacolor colour pencils. I do this in quite a lot of my watercolour paintings where I want to crisp up some of the edges quickly and easily without having to go back in with paint. I also find that white gouache dries a bit darker, so it isn't always as effective as using a white opaque colour pencil. In the end though, I was quite happy with how this one turned out. I really enjoyed experimenting with these two perily watercolours and I think they were the perfect colours for this small sketchbook study. I think they would be both really useful additions to any watercolour palette and I'm looking forward to incorporating them into more paintings in the future and experimenting with how they mix with other colours on my palette too. If you enjoyed the video please give it a thumbs up and if you are watching my channel for the first time and have made it this far please consider subscribing and hit the bell icon to get notified as soon as I upload a new video. Thank you all so much for watching, take care, have a great weekend and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye!